Hey, how's it going? This is Gazelig for grinderschool.com and here today with the final part of my series of uh, facing raises pre-flop. And if you haven't seen any of this series before, I definitely recommend going to watch it. What we did is we started off in the big blind facing raises and then we just moved our way around the table. So um, today it's going to be, you know, fairly unique spot uh, and exactly the same spot every time because we're facing a raise from under the gun and we're under the gun plus one. Um, whereas before we were, you know, we could have been in this seat and we could have been facing a raise from either of these uh, opponents. You know, if we we're on the button, we could have been facing a raise from anybody. Um, so you know, this is fairly specific. You know, if you were going to run a filter, you know, maybe you wanted to focus on an area so you could do like facing raises versus early position. Um, that might be more beneficial than than um, than this. Um, but I think. This uh, video is going to highlight some interesting uh, points, and the main point really is that you know a player under the gun is going to have a a pretty strong range, or at least he should do. So it's about how we adjust and adapt to to that. So we're going to jump straight in. We have the king queen of suited uh, king queen of spades or king queen suited here. Um, I think I think we can flat. I'm a little bit concerned about the sheer number of players left to act behind us. There's seven players left who can squeeze. Um, but it's a hand that, you know, I think we can play multi-way. King, queen off, obviously we're just going to go ahead and fold. So I think calling here or three betting this hand is absolutely fine. Uh, we do call. And we face a fairly small bet here. Now, when he makes it 244, it, he's going to have to change his sizing up on the turn of the river to get the rest of his chips in. Um, this is a kind of a, a standard sort of tournament sizing, so maybe we shouldn't read too much into it. Um, but you know, we've got king queen suited versus a fairly small bet. The half pot would be three o five, so it's much less than half pot. It's more like I guess forty percent. Um, so I think we should definitely call. We have the backdoor flush draw. We have a gut shot. We have two over cards to the ten. Although he shouldn't really be betting a ten in this spot. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we call. And then the turn is the ace of diamonds, and he checks. Um, so what are we going to do? We we don't really have any uh, flush. Well, there are no flush draws out there now. Uh, I'm just trying to think of other draws that we have. And it's like king, queen, queen, jack, king, jack. And that's it of hands that we would choose to float. Um, now, there's a chance that king high is the best hand at the moment. He might have just been trying to take a stab with 9-8 uh, suited or something like that. But here's the thing. He's raising from under the gun. And so his range should be a little bit stronger. His range is obviously all over this, this board. Uh, he has aces, tens, ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, all of those types of hands. Um, so I guess you know there's a chance at this stage that he has us just completely crushed. But then you know when we get checked to, we need to try and find some bluffs. Um, so having a king and a queen in our hand obviously blocks the times when he has ace-king or ace-queen. Um, ace-10 is kind of unlikely as well, given the board. So, you know, he could have ace-jack, but then we could have ace-queen and we could have ace-king as well to flat in this spot. So I wouldn't actually hate, you know, betting the turn and jamming the river here. Um, it's pretty tough for us to find any other bluffs other than these two. Um... I think it's unlikely that our opponent bets kings or queens on the flop, but then we block those hands, um, and those are the type of hands that are going to call, so we block more of his calling range, um, which is good. I mean, the chances are he just has an ace-x hand and he's going to call us down, but um, yeah, I th think if we were trying to find some bluffs in this spot to, to balance the times when we have value, we'd have like pocket tens or ace-10 or ace-king and ace-queen, um, then I think king-queen... Queen Jack, uh, King Jack, if we have it, probably don't even have King Jack to call this raise. So we basically just have uh, four combos of King Queen and four combos of Queen Jack in this spot. So there's only eight combos of bluffs, and then we have, um, what would it be, two combos of Ace 10 suited. Uh, so I don't know, just one combo of Ace 10 suited, uh, three combos of 10s. And then, you know, a fair number of ace queens and, and ace kings sometimes. So I think we're, you know, finding bluffs is a bit like this is, is fairly good. Um, but anyway, we check and I think that's a mistake. Um, we can't really, you know, credibly rep an ace having checked back the 
turn. I just don't think we've got too many weak ace X hands uh, to call preflop. You know, the weakest ace really we should be calling with is, is ace 10 suited, which is a boat. So I suppose we could check ace 10 suited back on the turn, see if he bets the river and then we jam over the top. So that's, you know, that's reasonable. Um, I guess we, if we had ace jack suited, we might want to check back given that's, you know, the, the weakest ace x hand we have at that point. So I, mean, I, guess, I guess there are some hands that we can we can bet now. So ace jack suited, there's going to be two combos and ace and suited is just one. So we, I mean, we really just don't have uh, much room to be able to um, uh, to bluff here. I guess we'd have to think about, you know, would we call with queens and jacks in this spot if we can? That's extra value hands that we can have in our range, um, and therefore, you know, we can start adding some more bluffs. So I think we can bluff with this hand. Um, I think if we check here, we're most often. Uh, I'm going to say most often going to lose, but it's pretty tough for him to actually have a hand that beats us because he shouldn't really be betting any pairs on this board. Uh, kings and queens should be a check. Uh, kings, queens and jack, sorry, should be a check. Nines through, let's say, open sixes. Sixes through nines should be a check as well. Um, so having said all of that, I think there is a small chance that he does just have a hand like 9-8 suited um, that has just given up, um, but it'll be interesting to see. Okay, and he has pocket jacks. I think that's a really bad bet on the flop. Uh, he should just be checking pocket jacks, and then he can uh, he can check all the turn. And if the check uh, turn goes check check, then he can uh, value bet the river. I think. Um, so yeah, I think that was a misplayed hand in that spot by our opponent. Here we have pocket nines, and we have uh, 20 twenty three, twenty two big blinds. Uh, he's raising raising off a, a shorter stack than ours. Uh, this is a really weird spot because I don't really want a three bet fold, but then his four bet range is going to be, you know, he's going to have us crushed. Um, but by that point, there's going to be lots of chips in the middle, and we probably have to call off with nines, nines plus, depending on what we think his range is. Don't forget, he's raising from under the gun into lots of lots of players. Um, so if we sort of go backwards from what we think his value range is going to be. Um, to four bet jam, then if you four bet uh, tens plus an ace queen suited an ace king off, for example, in uh, in these positions, then we can't three bet call with nines. So the next option then is to call in position with nines. Not really set mining. Um, we just have a strong enough hand. But you know, on low car low yeah low boards, we're going to lose a lot of money versus his over pairs. Um, and on high cards, we're gonna, you know, sometimes might fold the best hand. So it's just not a good situation. I think this could probably just be a fold, um, but we call. Big blind comes along as well. Okay, and we see a bet. And now we have to we have to call at least one. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if we do. Okay, we just fold. Uh, I think we should call call one. I mean, he can bet his ace king and his ace queens here. Yes, he can have aces kings, queens, jacks, eights, um, ace jack, king jack, but. Um, he could have some flush draws as well. We don't block flush draws. We block 10-9 uh, suited, but I don't think he has that to raise off under 20 big blinds. So I think we should call, call one, uh, but we give up. Okay. Next one then, we have pocket queens. I think we can go either way here. Uh, we're calling or raising. And, you know, he's raising from under the gun. So, yeah, I'm not sure that we can through bet jacks. Um, but I think we can three bet queens and everyone folds. And we have queens again. Um, so it may be a common theme here that the hands that we choose to play against an under the gun range from under the gun plus one is uh, is fairly fairly strong. And we get a cold call about three bet. This guy's probably going to come along as well. Yep. Yeah. And I think now we should just try to uh, just to bet and get it in. And I choose to check. Um, I mean, this this guy's range is kind of strange to cold call a three bet in position. Um, so I guess maybe I mean I would check here with with ace king and ace queen, um, and then maybe maybe top set if we three bet that. But our range is going to be fairly strong here, and then any bluffs that we have like hearts probably going to want to go ahead and bet ace five of heart. That's uh, sorry, ace five suited that we had as a bluff. We're probably just going to want to check, although. Not sure that we would. 
uh, three bet that in this spot. So yeah, I'm not sure about the check. And now we're just going to be check jamming, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And he calls. Uh, he does a set. Um, yeah, that's uh, really bad on on his part. Like, so he's calling uh, more than an eighth of his stack here. Um, in the hope of hitting a set. I mean, we do have a fairly strong range in this spot, and this is this is maybe part of the problem. A three betting and under the gun razor. That's why sometimes we need to have some bluffs so that you know when he does hit, we don't pay him off all the time because we, you know, we brick. Um. Well, yeah, it's not going to be a, a winning call long term. Uh, calling with with pocket fives here. So, and the thing is as well, like this guy can just four bet, and what does this guy do with fives? It's just it's not very good. Move on to the next one. Okay, so this next one, I think we can, again we can call. I think we can three bet as well. Um, but we choose to call. And everyone comes along, and it's part of the danger of just calling is that you face a squeeze behind. Um, and I mean, we're getting fantastic odds to play in position. If we call, then at least one of these guys is probably going to be priced in to come along as well. Um, but I'm not sure that this is really the kind of hand that we want to be playing three ways i think a lot of the time we're going to hit a king or a queen and, and be in a lot of trouble so we're going to be really looking to hit a flush draw or a straight draw and so i just decided to let it go and i think like a sensible decision and this guy yeah i mean this is the kind of hand i guess you want to play in a multi-way three bet pot because it's pretty obvious where you're at when you hit uh, and if you don't hit then you're probably gonna to have to fold whereas king queen suited we can hit and still not be good Pocket tens, and we have um, about 35 big blinds effective. Again, I think we three bet, or we can call. I think I like calling at this stack depth because if we three bet and he jams, it's not a great spot. Therefore, you know, we're almost turning our hand into a bluff, and we might as well take this as a call and three bet some other hands for bluffs that we can comfortably fold versus a four bet, and then obviously four bet for value with some hands as well. Sorry, three bet for value with some hands. Um, here with the tens, I mean, we do have some queen x, we have some ace x as well, so we're looking at like ace ten suited, ace jack suited, uh, ace queen, and possibly ace king that we didn't want a three bet get in against this guy. Um, so yeah, so this, uh, you know, we definitely have some some strong hands on this on this board and tens, so it's going to be a check. Um, we have a full house. He bet's fairly small. I think we have to call one. Um, when villain 49 over calls as well, the chance of him having an ace is fairly high. I think if villain 50 now bets again, it's really unlikely that he's bluffing because at least one of us, either us as hero or villain 49, has an ace. So I think if he bets again, we're going to have to fold. And he checks. And I don't think we can value bet. I think we just have to check this one down. I think the likelihood of villain 49 having an ace is, is fairly high. So we check. And... Um, I yeah, I just don't get it. Uh, I don't know. I just can't even begin to explain what villain forty nine is uh, is doing in this uh, in this spot over calling um, with you know nothing. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one before we uh, dwell on that. We've got ace ten suited. Then um, we have twenty five bigs. I think flooding here is okay. I think a three bet folding would be okay. Um, so yeah, cool. And we have two other cards in the back door flush draw. Um, so do we want to bet or do we want to check? Just trying to think about the value hands that we that we have in this spot. Maybe like nines, tens, jacks, I guess. Um, we're unlikely to have a hand like seven six or nine six or nine seven, so any sort of straight draws. Um, so taking a hand with some back door, like two overs and a and back door could be could be fairly good to bet here. Um, clearly at this point decided to check and oops um, okay so versus the bet and the call we're getting some a pretty favorable odds uh, we have nine outs to the flush and that's going to come in 18% of the time and now we're getting uh, onto 20% so we don't quite have enough but we have some implied odds as well uh, and we're playing playing in position so the chance of being able to win an extra few chips on the river is, uh, is that much higher when we do hit and we do hit um so now we have a decision to make about how much we are going to choose to bet 
Um, I think it's unlikely that either of these players has a flush. I think trip eight is potentially how they could have. Uh, but I, mean, I guess when we overcall, the kind of hands that we have are flush draws and then hand maybe sevens and sixes. But I'm not sure I would flat sevens and sixes versus under the gun. So maybe we just have uh, flush draws and this, that's why this guy is checked. And this guy can now check full houses expecting us to bet. Um, yeah, we really don't have anything other than flushes here, but we do have the, the nut flush, so I guess that's why we choose to, to bet big. Um, well, all in, I mean, two-thirds pot. Um, I think it's pretty tough for our opponents to call here. I just don't think we have any bluffs, because our calling range on the turn is just basically flush draws. Um, I guess a hand like ace-3 is a straight now, ace-4, we're just going to check back. So... We just don't have any bluffs. Um, yeah, so I think we need to bet smaller here. And we ended up getting called. Um, he had pocket sixes. I mean, if he could hand read just a little bit, he would know that this call is bad because sometimes, you know, even if we did check back on this board, it would be with a with a pair better than sixes. Um, you know, it's, we're never going to be bluffing with three threes uh, because we don't call pocket threes in the, in the first place. Uh, so yeah, I think his call is pretty bad. Um, let's just go back and just analyse that hand from his point of view. So he raises sixes under the gun, I guess that's kind of okay. And then he checks, that's fine. And then he calls, yeah, I think he can definitely call here um, in position. You know, this guy's going to have a lot of draws. So he does block them with sixes, he does block the most obvious 7-6, but uh, I don't know if he had the six of spades, but I don't think he blocks too many flush draws. Uh, when this guy checks, yeah, he has to check, and then we bet, and yeah, I guess, like, what, what, oh, he has pocket sevens, I guess, he has pocket sixes or sevens with a spade, but it's not a huge blocker, because we're not calling with a seven or a six suited, um, so he can't really use that um, argument, so maybe he's just, like, wants to prevent us from being able to bluff only two cards here uh, the thing is we just don't have any bluffs as I said so you can actually you know overfold this uh, this spot with the sixes um, yeah okay um, so we see a raise and we have 12 bigs and we're just going to jam the queens and we get it in against aces not a lot to talk about um, here we have 14, 3, like 12 big blinds versus under the gun rage, uh, raise. We're just going to jam with the ace king suited. Uh, we flop the world and we double. Uh, okay, so now we got a guy raising and we got pocket nines again. I think, I think calling is fine, but like we said before, the further round we are in the table, the, the more. Uh, players there are that can pick up a hand. So we have uh, 1600 to call. Um, yeah, I don't think we're quite getting the right odds. See, if we never think this guy's bluffing as well, then we, you know, it's even more of an easy fold. Uh, but we could call and then in, in, invite this guy in. Uh, so this wouldn't be, wouldn't be terrible. Um, but I can see the fold as well. Uh, here we decide to 3-bet, okay, well, I was going to say that looks it's quite a big 3-bet, more than 4x, but we just, we've just jammed all in with 9 big blinds, and well, we get some serious action. Do we hold? Uh, yeah. Okay, so now we have aces again, and once again, so our range of hands is just fairly strong, with 3-bet and take it down. Um, this time we decide to flat with the aces, so it's nice to see some um, some change here. We can see that if we three bet under the gun, our range is going to look very very strong. So we either we either flat some strong hands to protect our weaker flats, or we start bluffing with more hands so we actually get some action when we do have a strong hand. Um, this is obviously ideal. Let's see what this guy does first. So this guy flats the the squeeze. And I think now at this point there's enough money in there we can just jam. Um, but you could just flat here as well, um, because we flat, there's an extra 900 in the middle, 3600, this guy has 
you know, not a lot of chips behind. So what we can do is check and see if Bill in 104 wants to do anything. I can't remember what I did here. I did jam. I think we can flat. I think we can jam. I, this, I don't think either of them are. Well, I don't think this guy's folding. Bill in 102, maybe versus this action, you know, could hand read and say, okay, this guy's flattened me, then this guy's squeezed and I've called, and now this guy's jammed. My, you know, tens are not, not good here. So sometimes it can be good. And he ended up having tens. Um, yeah, sometimes it can be good just to flat in those uh, in those spots uh, versus the squeeze. Here we decide. Okay, so here's an example of where we're trying to um, rather than flat the king queen suited, we've decided to three bet it. I'm not convinced it's great. I mean, this guy can just jam because he has 22 big blinds, but we do put him in a pretty tough spot, and we have blockers to his strongest. Uh, strongest hands um, but now the SPR is like just over one and we have a decision to make like do we just bet call because he could have some draws like jack 10 and flush draws um, but some of those flush draws are going to be better than our hand at this stage so I think I guess we got a we either bet really small and try and get him to fold some hands similar to ours or we just check back so I bet small and he jams and we fold and that's probably the worst the thing that could have happened um, yeah, I don't think he's going to have enough bluffs here, so, but let's move on. Uh, facing a raise, very, very big raise, um, but we only have eight big blinds, so I think we can just comfortably jam here. Guy wakes up with a hand behind, and that's what's going to happen sometimes. So, you know, if we were in the big blind with pocket nines, we can comfortably jam because there's no one left to act behind us. Um, whereas in this spot, we do have to tighten up a little bit because someone could easily wake up with a better pair behind. Uh, I still think nines is probably too strong to, to pass. Here with pocket fours, um, calling here seems a bit loose. I just, you know, you just have to hit a four in order to, to win, and we're only going to win 13 or 14,000. Um, so I think it's great. But. We did it, and um, we decide to bet this board. Um, so we pocket eights. I think we can have, um, and that is basically the strongest, the only you know really strong hand that we have. We can have king queen suited. We can sometimes have king jack. We can sometimes have ace king. I guess that we didn't want a three bet. Uh, call it off against Bill in one twenty four. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't see a point of betting fours here. I think it's just a check and. The thing is now, when this guy calls, he has like nines, tens, jacks, and queens. And we now, I mean, in theory, I guess we should now just follow through and just try and barrel him off those cards. Because when he checks, it's unlikely he has a king. Like he'd, he, I mean, he should be checking here with some king ten suited and some king jack suited. But that's only going to be two combos of each of those hands. I could guess he could have pocket eights. Um, but a lot of his range is now going to be those marginal pairs. So if we check here... Yeah, I think this is just a mistake. If we, once we choose to bet the flop, we've got to almost follow through and say we've got pocket eights or a king. And I mean, I guess we can check those hands back, but we're never going to be able to get all the chips in if we check the turn. So um, and now when he checks, we're going to end up checking back probably and losing to like tens or jacks or queens or something like that. Yeah. So I think that's uh, pretty, pretty poor. Uh, I think we should probably just check the flop. But as played, I think we need to turn into a bluff. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure that the fours is a, is a cool pre-flop either. Here we decide to three bet, and we're just jamming for less than ten bigs, or fewer than ten bigs. And here we have aces again, and we decide to three bet this time. I guess we're fairly deep, so we can expect to call a bit more often. And now at this stage, we just want to be. Um, betting and getting the chips in. Um, uh, so that seems fine. And once again, we have aces and we decide to three bet and we get a call. Uh, we do have many 9x in our three bet range, um, but I think we can, I mean, we can bet here. That's fine. Um, so we're sizing our bet. That seems, I mean, that seems okay. It's, you know, it's the bluffs, it's a really good. Price for a bluff doesn't cost us very much. We risk as little as possible. Plus, we can still get it all in by the river. So. Seems okay. Um, Ace eight suited. I decide to call. Uh, I don't really like this. I think we need to be in later position to call. Ace eight suited here. Uh, he bets, and um, we can peel one. I think. 
And now we just want to go bet bet. I think if we had ace king of clubs or ace queen of clubs, they just have a bit more showdown value. We can beat his ace tens and um, you know, we had ace king and we beat his ace queens. Um, but here I think we can we can bet. And yeah, seems good. Probably follow it up on the river. But thinking about kind of value hands that we have, I mean, ace jack of diamonds, some of the jack x of diamonds. Um, we probably don't bet pairs like eights through tens, but we could have pocket jacks, we could have pocket sevens, eight seven suited, I guess. Although there's those sort of more speculative hands aren't great calling an under the gun razor when you're in under the gun plus one because all of these other players are left to act behind. Okay, here we call with the tens, I think that's good. Um, so we do have some king x and jack x, we have jack ten suited, queen jack suited. Um, we may even have jacks, although, you know, it's only one combo now. Um, King Jack suited, again, not too many combos. Um, uh, in fact, it's uh, just one, uh, the King Jack of Diamonds. Um, we do have pocket kings. I guess we have ace 10 and ace queen of clubs, hearts, and spades that we can float with. Um, but I think we probably have to call at least one with the pocket tens. And then try and check it down. Oh, nice river. Um, so when he checks the turn and then fires the river, I think the chance of him having a hand like ace queen is fairly high. The chance of him having a better full house is fairly low. I just think that if he has a hand like jack ten, which you know is, uh, can he have jack ten? Let's have a look. Can't have jack ten of hearts. Can't have jack ten of clubs. Can't have jack ten of spades. Can't have jack ten of diamonds. So he doesn't have. Uh, jack 10 unless he opens jack 10 off um, so yeah pretty tough for him to have jack 10 uh, he can have king jack though and he let's have a look yeah I, th I just think it's unlikely that he checks the turn with a, a hand that beats ours now on the river so I think we definitely need to raise um, we could raise it well I'm trying to think okay so what bluffs could we raise here um, so we call the flop. So I guess we should probably raise with some of our weakest pairs. We, I mean, potentially we could raise with a hand like ace 10. Um, but if we get to this spot with like nines or eights, then those would be the first candidates because they are probably not good enough to call a river bet, but we could turn them into a bluff. Um, and it, yeah. Uh, let's just look at the turn. Does the turn check? Go check, check. Okay. So we don't actually have too many hands to be able to to, to raise here for value. Um, I guess ace queen of well ace yeah ace queen possibly ace queen of hearts. We can check back the turn. We don't necessarily have to bluff bluff it. Um, so I mean, let's just say we just had like four combos of ace queen and three combos of tens. That's pretty much it. Uh, seven combos. And then we could value bet a couple of combos, maybe like the worst pairs, uh, or ace 10 suited, I guess. So we'd have three combos. Yeah, three combos of ace 10 suited, and uh, just blocks him from having a full house with the 10s. And we obviously can have that because we actually do have that in this spot. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so we jam and. Okay, so I think jamming is is, is too much. Um, we could jam if we had a ton of bluffs here. So if it was like if it was king three jack, so like the three cards in the middle here with a flop, then we can potentially have way more bluffs on the river because we'd have lots more flush draws and straight draws. But here on this board, we just don't. Um, the, yeah, I mean, do we call with queen ten? Uh, yeah, so maybe maybe Queen Ten is is the worst a hand that we get to the river with, um, apart from like let's say nines or eights if we if we decided to float with those hands. Uh, so Queen Ten is probably the hand that we want to be uh, raising as a bluff, and then you know we have just pocket tens um, that take this line and and Ace Queen, and <clears throat> so yeah, we should be you know fairly okay raising that range. So ace, queen, and tens for value, and then queen, ten as a bluff. Uh, but yeah, we just, we don't have enough bluffs in this spot for 
us to make a big jam, and he just doesn't have any strong hands or strong enough hands to call here. I don't believe. Now, if he ends up showing us, you know, a hand worse than ours, then then great. I just think it's kind of unlikely here. Any folds. So just um, just again a simple bit of hand reading and range analysis uh, shows that we it's very unlikely we were going to get called in that spot. Okay, next one. Then we have pocket tens, and with, uh, he has. Let's go back. He has twenty four ish, twenty three and a half big blinds. So I think three bet calling would be absolutely fine. If we don't think that he is going to jam hands that we are doing great with tens here, I think we can flat and then potentially call if you know one of these short stack shoves. So it seems reasonable. I uh, definitely want to go ahead and call here. Uh, he continues to bet the kind of hands he's going to choose to bet here is uh, flush draws and obviously his uh, very very strong hands um, so I think we can potentially call here and fold river um, or we could just fold here you know he's got to put us on exactly what we have like basically nines through maybe jacks and then a sex hands and he's still choosing to bet um, I guess you know we could have some diamonds, he's, uh, but then you know he's value betting. He you know if we have diamonds, it's um it's less likely he has diamonds. If he has diamonds in his hand, it's less likely that we have diamonds. So what do you think we're calling with? So I think we can potentially fold the, the turn. So that's what we do. Um, okay. So we call it pocket fours. Don't like this at all. Um, this time we do hit, and we can just go ahead and bet. Now we choose to check, and the difficulty thing, uh, difficulty now is that we are going to find it very difficult to get the chips in because we've only got two streets to do it. So we probably have to raise here, and um, you know then the pot's going to be bigger on the river, or potentially we call here and then we raise the river. So choose to call. He checks now. Um, we don't have a lot of bluffs here. So we can't bet too big, probably have to bet like half pot. We bet a bit more than half pot and he check calls. He ends up having queen 10. I mean, his bet on the turn is pretty bad. Uh, his call on the river, you know, we, again, we just don't really have that many bluffs. Um, so yeah, I just, yeah, I don't like the way he's played this hand. Let's move on. Pocket kings now. So we see an open and I think we should flat here. I mean, we can jam. I don't think we can three bet small because our hand looks really, really strong. Um, so under twenty bigs, if we're three betting under the gun raise, of a hand is just very, very strong because we're very unlikely to be folding versus a four bet when we three bet off this stack size, um, and we're even less likely to be four betting when we three bet under the gun raiser. So I think we can flat here or we can jam. Uh, so I choose to jam. Thankfully, we get a call behind, um, and this obviously is. A very very bad call um, because I mean what does he really expect us to have in this situation um, so not only does he have to worry about our jam here but he has to worry about this guy with the hand and then also one two three four five players as well so pretty pretty poor play by the jack 10 suited uh, here we have kings and only 12 big so I'm just gonna rip and hope to get looked up and we do buy this guy with jacks and that's great and we double in pocket threes I'm gonna call a raise here I mean Again, we are, I mean, we're really deep this time, and no one has a jam stack behind this. I mean, these guys can squeeze. I think it's kind of okay for us to, to flat here, and now we're just going to try and check it down. And this is just a really bad bet. We should just, like, it works here. We can get him to fold, like, I guess, 9 8 suited or ace queen or something like that that he's deciding not to check call or, or bluff with. Um, but yeah, this is pretty bad, so not. Good. This hand is going to benefit from you know the implied odds of being able to hit a set and winning you know 160 big blinds for our opponent, not trying to bluff on on this board with third pair. Uh, okay, so we have sixes here. We're going to go ahead and call and just give up here. Yep, that's fine. And ace queen. I guess we're all in here. Yep, that seems reasonable. And they get called by ace ten, and that's fine. 
here we have ace queen. So again, I think calling or three betting both fine here. I decide to three bet, and we get a cold call from a guy with twenty three bigs, which is kind of crazy. And then another call here, and then this guy four bets. And in a weird way, we are kind of three betting ace queen off a bluff. I mean, we're doing it for value to begin with, but then versus this, ace queen off kind of just shrivels up. So this is a fold now. These two get it in. I mean, it's likely that this guy cold calling the, the three bet versus these positions is going to be fairly strong. Uh, yeah, this is pretty bad. <laughs> he yeah, he shouldn't be cold calling a, a three bet here versus what should be two very very strong ranges. Um, and yeah, how what's his price? Yeah, he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to continue here. Like it's just really really bad. So this seat, seat seems to be a funny seat at the moment. Okay, we have ace king then. Um, we decide to three bet. Clearly, we feel confident enough to be able to play the stacks against this guy. And he folds. And we have ace king again. And we don't have to worry too much about stacks this time because we're 60 big blinds deep. So he could four bet and we can fly in position. He just decides to flat and then he checks to us on this flop. Um, so I think with potentially with ace king of spades, diamonds or hearts, we can bet because we have a chance to double barrel. With this hand though, I think we're probably going to want to check, which means that we probably have to check some very very strong hands as well uh, to balance that out. So we actually choose to to bet. Um, so I mean, thinking about it, you know, if we if our range is basically tens plus an ace queen. Then maybe we should check back ace king of spades, diamonds, and hearts actually, and then bet ace king off. Um, it's going to benefit from getting him to fold. Well, what's he, what's he actually going to fold? Like some queen jacks and jack tens that have potential to hit a pair or a straight by the river. Um, yeah, I'm not sure this bet really accomplishes much. Um, so. Yeah, not sure. And then he raises. Yeah, I just think this is a good bad spot. Uh, I think we should check back, see if we can hit an ace or a king on the turn, actually. Okay. Uh, so again, we get three bet probably here. We three bet pretty small. I'm um, not sure about this. And we get three calls. <laughs> and we get this board. Uh, so our SPR against this guy is obviously about two or less than two. I'm not sure we can really fold in this situation. Um, I, I think I do like a bet though, because if we bet this guy calls or does something and then one of these two calls as well, then I think we can actually fold our hand. Whereas if we check and this guy bets and this guy goes all in, this guy folds, then we're in a tough spot with ace-king. So I think betting is, uh, is fine here. Um, here we have ace-queen suited and I think flatting is good. And we see it's squeeze, fairly big squeeze. Um, 29% equity, I can see kind of calling here. Um, we actually decide to back raise, which is kind of cool. Um, if this guy is loose and he's squeezing a lot, then fair enough. Um, but you know, it's under the gun open and under the gun plus one flat, so it's not that likely that he's squeezing the light here. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, this is just awful. Like, I don't, I don't understand what he thinks that we're jamming here. Um, the squeeze is the squeeze is bad. I mean, he's just got such a profitable flat in position here with ace ten suited, so he doesn't need to squeeze with it. It's really bad. And then calling it off is just uh, terrible. Okay, ace queen suited again. Decide to three bet this time, and we get it to go heads up. And I think checking or betting both fine. Two over cards and a backdoor flush draw, um, and a backdoor straight draw. Ten and jack. Ten and jack comes off. We have a straight. Um, so yeah, betting here is fine. The problem we've got now is quite a lot of cards are going to be like this, and then we check, and what do we do on the river? And he bets really, really small, and the chance of him having a speed is very large. Um, our hand looks exactly like what it is, like ace king, ace queen, or ace high, uh, but we end up calling, and he probably has a speed. Well, I, just, I have no words. <laughs> We've seen a lot of these hands so far, like raising under the gun and calling a three-bet out of position, and then calling here with, a, I guess, a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor gut shot, and then firing tiny on the river. Um, you're not going to, you're not going to see this from a, uh, a competent opponent. So I think we're going to leave it there. 
um, before I just get more, even more amazed by some of these plays that we've seen today. Um, so yeah, uh, lots of things to think about. Definitely think about you know the range of hands that you want to call in this spot, the range of hands that you want to three bet for value and maybe stack off, especially you know under forty big blinds. Um, and that might adjust your calling range, and then we can obviously three bet some hands as a bluff and three bet hands uh, for value to to get in and to stack off. Um, and then I think mixing, you know, ace-queen suited as the three bet or a call seems fine. Hands like king-queen suited, maybe even pocket tens when you're deep. Um, and thinking about the theory of, of, of someone waking up with a hand behind, you know, folding out someone's equity. So if we can three bet and get the big blind to fold, then we go heads up more often rather than three ways uh, or even, you know, even more. So if we flat, we you know, we invite other people in, especially when the under the gun raiser opens he's likely to have a strong range and then we call and it kind of freezes everyone else but it also allows everyone to see a see a flop um and try to crack a strong range of the under the gun players so that's another reason for potentially uh three bedding uh, from this spot so that you do get to go heads up uh, more often all right, if you want to get in touch at all you can leave a comment in the forum uh you can email me gazellegpoker at gmail.com or you can follow me on Twitter at Gazellig Poker. All right, so this has been Gazellig for Grindescore.com. Signing off. Take care, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.